Sometimes people don't want to hack you. They just want to take you down. It's hard to talk about anything in security without using DOS as just almost something you say. It's like water, air, you know, it's just, you just assume everybody kind of knows what that is. But I want to take a moment to, to define both DOS and DDOS and talk about the different kinds of both of them that you can encounter. Uh, denial of service and distributed denial of service, that's DDOS, are both methods of the same thing disconnecting service in some way. Think of the word denial of service. So if it's a website and you do a DOS attack, you are denying people from servicing that website, right? You can't get to that website. If you're denying a voice over IP phone system service, you can't make phone calls on it, right? There's all kinds of different, different uh, uh, things you can apply it to. But at the end of the day, denial of service is preventing something from doing what it was designed to do. Now, the challenge with denial of service is that the way that they deny service service is often by sending what looks to be completely legitimate traffic. Here's what I mean. If you've got a website and somebody uh, does, well, actually, before, before I even say that, if you've got a website, what, what, is, what is that website there to do? Well, it's designed to serve web pages, right? People around the world on smartphones and computers are accessing that website, expecting to get a web page delivered to their device. So a denial of service attack might be somebody that is sending a request to that website, this is DOS, to try and crash that website or hang the process or something that prevents that website from, from servicing other ones. Or a distributed denial of service attack is using a whole bunch of computers to send requests to that website. Now, now the, the catch with distributed denial of service attacks or DDoS is that it's typically a flood of traffic, right? That are all valid requests, right? They're all saying, hey, send me the web page. It's just there's so many of them requesting the web page at the same time that the web server can't keep up in servicing what looks to be completely valid requests coming from these, these devices. Now. The goodish news is that pulling off a real distributed of denial of service attack is very difficult to do because you have a whole bunch of computers that you have to acquire to, to do something like that. Well, until recent times, right? There's, there's the dark net. There's all kinds of places where you can go where you can pay money to access a whole glut of processing power. See, what happens is people infect computers all around the world with malware and make them a part of the botnet. Now, I'm saying the botnet as if it's a single entity. There's all kinds of botnets out there. Essentially, what these are are computers that are under the control of, of people that have installed malicious software on it. And the, and the thing is, most of the time, people don't even know they're infected, right? They're just doing their day-to-day -day things, and there's this idle kind of passive. They call the computers zombies, right? There's this process behind the scenes at any given point in time that can take that computer and use it for whatever purpose there is. So you can actually go to many places, pay money, gain access to millions of computers. Well, a lot of them anyway, and, and hit a button and send a ton of web requests all at once to these different websites. That's, that's our world of today. And that is known as the distributed denial of service attack. That's, that's one method of it. So, so let's look at our agenda right here. We've got three different types of DDoS attacks to talk about, and these will go pretty quick. Network denial of service or distributed denial of service, same thing, it's, it's just the number of devices that are trying to do it, um, is all about trying to fill up the network connection with enough bandwidth that the devices can't keep up. See, nowadays, I mean, I, I don't know if you remember back in the day when we would have, you know, one, I mean, I remember T1 lines. Anyone remember that phrase? That is a 1.544 megabit per second connection. Back in my day, when I walked uphill to school both ways, that was extremely fast, right? It, that, that was back in the days of modems. But we've come to the point where getting a thousand megabit per second or a gigabit home connection is commonplace. People do it all the time. And so people can use these home connections to saturate the network that is trying to attach to these computers. I mean, if you've got a web server and it only has one gigabit uh, per second 
uh, if I could write that and talk. Uh, you could use a single home connection with enough requests, right, to try and fill up that one gigabit per second pipe to where there's, not, there's no bandwidth left to service anything else. That would be known as a network denial of service attack. Now, keep in mind, it's not as if you can just push a button and fill up the, the network connection bandwidth. You have to send what looks to be a ton of valid requests and valid traffic. So not, sometimes it's a lot more difficult to do than it looks, but again, with botnets and a lot of the dark web tools that automate a lot of this, it can be even easier than a lot of people think. So, so sometimes the only way to get around that is to ensure your server has number one, an IPS system, you know, something that can detect a lot of these invalid requests, but also ensure that you have enough bandwidth. You know, you, you might not need 100 gigabits per second, but if you've got a pop, popular website that, that could be a victim of a network denial of service attack, having that bandwidth there to service a huge denial of service attack is often advantageous, right? Second thing, application denial of service attack. This is attacking the actual application in some way to where it can no longer service the client. It could be invalid requests, like finding a bug or a vulnerability uh, in, let's just say, Apache web server, right? That's a, that's a very uh, common web server software runs on Linux. So you, you find a bug or a vulnerability and you send an invalid request to that, that server that causes it to crash. I mean, a single request could be a, a denial of service attack if it's specially crafted to try and take that web server down. Or just like I was saying, you could do a DDoS attack of flooding that web server with a ton of requests to where the application itself, the web server software, it's no longer the network. It's the application that can no longer keep up with it. That is a application DOS attack. This last one is the newest one to the list. Operational Technology DOS. This has to do with everything moving online. This aims denial of service techniques at business systems or process software and hardware. Here's what I mean. Nowadays, it's very common to, to integrate HVAC systems, uh, you know, cooling, air conditions with the, the network so you can control it remotely, right? That's a business system. You could have your, your process software. You could have software that controls tractors driving around a warehouse that automatically pull down pallets and, and put them into boxes and crates and things like that. You could have all kinds of things that automate your business process or just normal part of your day-to-day, -day. video surveillance, badge systems. Those are all considered operational technology. Now, can you imagine, well, before COVID and everybody going remote, can you imagine the impact of, of somebody taking out the badge system for the office? You shut down the company. It's a denial of service. People can't get into the building to do their job anymore. That's why I said COVID kind of changed everything because they're like, oh, great. And they all go home and just work from home because people are used to doing that nowadays. But, but still, there's a lot of systems that if attacked or if disabled, cripple a business. That is all considered operational technology denial of service. Let me show you something. I'm going to bring up my computer right now. I've, I've taken you to uh, threatmap.fortiguard.com. This is, this is for Fortinet firewalls. And there, by the way, I, this is not the only one of these that exists. There are a ton of these things all around, with many different, when I say a ton of these, visual maps. Look at this right now. I mean, <laughs> if this were like a war game, if these were missiles, the United States would be exploded and, and decimated, right? This is showing all the different attacks. And, and, and you'll often see these visual maps created by a lot of these uh, firewall organizations because they have the central database that's watching these attacks and they have their appliances installed at a lot of different places, right? At any given point in time, there are literally, I mean, this is just showing Fortinet's perspective. There are thousands of these attacks happening every single second, right? This just takes Fortinet's reporting and gives you a visual rep representation of where they're being attacked. And it kind of gives you a, a pulse of what kind of things are attacked. Now, now I don't know how to pause this. I don't think it's meant to be paused because it's meant to be just a, a scrolling ticker. But you see all of the, the, the light blue ones? Those are all denial of service attacks. In this case, I, just because I can see it, my eyes are, are tuned into it. I see MS Windows, GDI Library, EMF, DOS. Now, you can, I can tell you that's, that's not a flood of data. 
that's not a um, like a, a thousand devices all at once, like saturating the network. That's somebody trying to go after. There, it sounds like there's a GDI library, and let's go back to this: a GDI library in Windows that has a vulnerability, and somebody is trying to to exploit that. Right? They probably have an automated script that's going around trying to exploit that in a m many different sites. That is known as a denial of service attacks, and they're happening all the time. Right? So. You now know what they are. You know what the denial service attack uh, does. Next step, and we'll talk about that in another video, is what are some of the methods that you can use to, tar to, to start preventing it? For now, three things. Network, application, and operational technology denial of service. Know those methods, and then we'll, know, we'll, we'll soon learn how to stop them.